Today, I'm gonna to share a very efficient workflow to create short form video content. Reels, TikTok, YouTube Shorts. We're gonna shoot a row, b row, do some screen recording, and then we're gonna mix it all up using only free software. DaVinci Resolve for the primary editing and CapCut for desktop for the captions and special effects. Yeah, yeah, Mary, and this channel will help you with the tech tools to be creative. And if it's your first time here, all the videos are split in chapters to be as organized as possible. And all the links for everything that I mentioned, software or hardware, are gonna be in the description below. Okay, so first let's take a look at how I shoot the content. Normally I'm using the Sony a7 III with the 35 1.8 Sony, turned sideways of course for vertical content. It is a very cheap and light setup considering it's full frame. And I love this lens, it's just so small and sharp. Now this camera doesn't have a flip screen, so I use the smartphone as an external monitor using a special app just for that. The app is called Monitor Plus and it serves a variety of Sony cameras and you can see a dedicated video over here. Now depending on your setup, it's not gonna make a huge difference if you record with a smaller camera, a compact smartphone, APS-C, especially the depending on your niche, the difference is just negligible. There are some other things that are much more important. I'm gonna show you later on. Sometimes I like to film at 14 millimeters because there's so much distortion and it really calls attention. But you have to worry about all this space here. Okay, so now I have the 35 1.8 and this is the Sony ZV-1, which is roughly the same focal distance. The main difference here you're gonna be seeing is the background. You see how it's much more in focus on the ZV-1. You can kind of see what's on the screen and everything. And here in the full flame, it's quite blurred and I'm more detached from the background, so you can pay more attention to what I'm saying. Anyways, this is what you see when you're watching the short video, but this is the setup behind the scene. Now, camera, tripod, lens, key light, side light, microphone, there's a bunch of stuff to put in place. As the camera setup goes, it's very simple. The shutter at 1 50th of a second, the aperture wide open, the ISO as low as possible. The final video is gonna be 1080 by 1920, which is a full HD turned sideways. So if you shoot 4K, it's so much bigger that you can pan around, make movements, zoom in and out. I or face autofocus have to be enabled. If your camera supports it, please use it. I've tried manual focus, but it just doesn't work for me. If you got a flippy screen, perfect. Otherwise, use the system that I told you before. Now some extra stuff that really reduce the friction to start recording for me. At least one big SD card. In my case, I use a 128 gigabytes. And this grants me more than two hours of 4K recording in high quality. Otherwise, especially if you're filming alone, you have to be taking care of the volume of the audio, the SD card, how long have you been recording, it's just too much stuff. And chances are, one of these are gonna go bad in the middle. Especially the battery. There's this thing called dummy batteries. It's simply something that has the same shape of the battery of your camera, but holds out a cable that goes into the plug. So with these, you reduce your headache probabilities by 80%. As picture profile, each camera and person is gonna have a different opinion about it. In my case, I prefer to go with a middle approach. I use HLG, which is not without profile, and at the same time, it's not log profile. It's something in the middle that is very easy to grade with DaVinci Resolve, and just renders the skin and the highlights much better than not having anything. And I don't waste a lot of time grading log footage. It can be a fancier light like this, but it can also be just a normal Amazon softbox or simply good window lighting if you position yourself well. Now, one big alert, don't use the selfie camera. I know it's very comfortable, you can see yourself while you're recording, but the rear cameras are so much better. Another thing I like to do is having the script on the side here. In this case, I'm using the Oppo Pad Air and the script is in Notion, so that whatever I write on the desktop gets synchronized immediately over here. Now, if there's one thing you should pay attention and upgrade right from the start, is audio. There's a massive difference when using no microphone at all or just a simple external microphone. I talked about it in this short video over here. Now this is the audio without using a proper microphone. And this is how it sounds with a good microphone connected to the camera or to the smartphone. So if you had to upgrade one, which would it be? And the price range that I recommend and would improve it a lot is around 100 bucks. This would allow you to get a Rode VideoMic Go 2 which is this very small shotgun microphone that just has incredible audio, but doesn't allow you to get very far from the camera. If you're willing to spend just a little bit more, you can get the Rode Wireless Go with one or two transmitters, and then you can walk everywhere. And if you wanna go a little bit deeper into the home studio idea, you can check this video over here in which I go a little bit more in depth about all the setting up everything. And if you wanna dive head first, there's also my course on Skillshare in which in one hour you're gonna learn everything you need to be able to create content from your own home. Okay, now if you're doing some screen recording, how to do it on the phone and on the computer? Let me show you. On Android, I use the built-in screen recording tool. You just have to pay attention to which sound you want to have it, if it's the system audio or the microphone audio. 
It works pretty well and if you also enable the touches on the screen, it gets much clearer to understand. Now, one important thing to pay attention is that if you're gonna show yourself doing what you need on the computer or on the smartphone, it's better if you record the environment audio on both of them. This way later, you can synchronize both files and all the actions are gonna be simultaneous and you're not gonna be hunting around for the right point. Now to screen record on a Windows or a Mac, there are built-in tools. But I always prefer to use OBS, which is this free software that gives you a little bit more flexibility on doing it. You can choose the folder, you can choose the quality you want, and it's not that heavy, so it won't impact what you're doing on the computer while recording it. Okay, let's send the files over to the computer to begin editing, and you can use the SD card, AirDrop, Dropbox, whatever you prefer. I organize my folder structure like this to be a little bit easier to find everything, with videos and images separate and the videos separated by camera. And from the phone, I like to use AirDroid, which is this super useful AirDrop replacement for Android. Now to begin with, we're gonna use DaVinci Resolve and you can download it from the link in the description. There's the free version and also the studio version, but for this, we only need the free one. You can import all your media here and you can create a new timeline using a vertical resolution, which is now available. I like to have the videos added the center crop with no resizing. And mainly what I'm gonna do is bring the arrow into the timeline and chop it up by using T on the keyboard and the shortcuts Q and W. So you can just double click in the media pool. And if you click this button over here, you can see the preview for what's on the media pool and the preview for the timeline. So like this, you don't have to be clicking on both all the time to see what's going on. I like to leave a couple of layers for them so that I can make it a little bit faster using J cuts and L cuts. It's when you overlap them a little bit like this. I'll throw the B-roll on top on a new layer, whatever it fits. And also the screen recording goes over here. Now maybe some of you out there are gonna have the same issue as me when importing the screen recording from the phone. As depending on the shape and the resolution of the screen, it's not gonna be full HD or a multiple of it. So it won't fit. So I like to reduce it a little bit, replicate it on the back, and add some Gaussian blur. Like this, you kinda like just feel the edges around it. And I like to add this drop shadow for a little bit more separation. Looks pretty cool like this. Now, if you followed what I said before and you recorded everything in 4K, you can also add some twists right now, like zooming in and out or speed ramping a little bit. And to do that, you can activate the keyframes over here, which is just a marker telling that those are the values at that point. And now, if you go forward in time in the footage and you set another marker over here, and you change the values, DaVinci is just going to create all the path in the middle to suit that. So if you increase the zoom, it's going to increase the zoom very slowly between one point and the other. And if you want a faster effect, like this zoom here, for example, you can set the markers a little bit closer. And to add this nice decrease in speed, you can right click on the marker and choose Ease In. And if you want to be a little bit more advanced, you can right click the footage and go to the read time controls. Here you're going to be able to fine tune the exact curve of speed, position, whatever you want. Just check the property you want in this list over here and have fun. Some other effects that I like to add still here in DaVinci are some transitions in between scenes. And there are some very simple built into the software, but that makes the video a little bit more dynamic. Like this pushes to the left, to the right, up and down. These other transitions, maybe not. Okay, so I think about DaVinci, we're good to go. Let's take this to CapCut now. Now go over to the last page, which is the Deliver page. And to have a small file, but with good quality, you can choose 8264 from here. QuickTime or MP4. And here I like to use Restrict to 80 megabits per second. Now CapCut is very famous with the smartphone editor, but the desktop one is very good also. So you can just download it from the link in the description and after you install it, you can add the video we just exported into it. Now before anything, I like to do the captions because like this I know where I can't put too much stuff on the screen, otherwise it's gonna be just confusing to read. So you can go to text, auto captions. Choose the language and usually CapCut does a very good job. Up here on the right, you're gonna have captions and you can see the whole text. So here you can do any kind of corrections if necessary. Also something very useful over here is that you can just select a part of the text, press enter, and it's gonna create a second line for that. And since I want the text to be big enough to be easy to read, I like to split it every couple of words. So I'll just go over the text here, pressing enter to keep them more or less in the same size. And then we can go on to customize the font. Now yellow is usually a color that stands out in front of any kind of footage, but adding a stroke is gonna make it a little bit better, be it white or black. And on animation, you can pick the one that you think it's cool. I like to use the mini zoom or the zoom. And if you get the pro version, you can use some fancier one. 
From this point on, I worry about stickers, effects, and sound design. Now CapCut has a built-in media library, which is very cool, but some things are a little bit hard to find. Like the stickers don't have a search bar, so you have to go through the category and then kind of find what fits. If you want to download some fancier stuff, you can go to motionarray.com. This is not sponsored, I just use them many times for client work and it works very well. And they have a monthly subscription, which makes it a little bit easier. Now regarding the music, you're going to have a choice. From CapCut, you can get some music that is from the TikTok library. And if you add it here, you're going to be able to play around with it a little bit more. Changing the volume, fading in, fading out, all this sort of stuff. But if you plan to use it outside of TikTok, you might have problems because of copyright. So usually the best way to go about it and also to have a little bit more exposure because you're using a popular song is to just pick the song in each platform and adjust the volume accordingly. On Instagram, I like to leave the volume around 40% and the original audio at 100. And TikTok seems to be a little bit more sensitive, so I leave it around 8 or 9%. Now, when you feel like it's more than enough, just go to the quick export and these are the settings that I've been using. They guarantee an excellent quality and at the same time, it's not a massive file that is just going to be super compressed by all the platforms. So once that's done, you just have a video that is ready to be published in all the platforms. Then I'll just go to each one of them, create drafts and let it be ready for publishing later on. And that's it. I hope this guide on how to create short form video content has been useful to you. If you do anything differently or you have any suggestion to improve this workflow even more, please tell me in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.